All right, so I'm doing a oil change on a uh, Dodge Viper here. Um, the problem with this is a seven and a half hour job because the oil filter wants to run in right here, run into the frame. It comes down right here, and you can't get the darn thing out because it runs to the frame. This is somebody else's idea of trying to move the frame and get it out of the way, and it doesn't help. You can cut the nipple down that sticks out of there so that you only have an eighth of an inch worth sticking into your filter because your filter at the top of the wall is only an eighth of an inch any daggone way so you can get it out probably that way because you do have a little bit of space here but i decided the easiest thing to do rather than a seven and a half hour you know oil change where you gotta jack the whole engine up and all that kind of stuff it's just to come in here with a metal sawzall and just cut it right like that cut the can in half from this angle you got to remove the the oil pan to do it but you can reuse the gas on the oil pan you know so you don't even need to replace it it is reusable um so you come in here and you just cut this thing off right there and you can take one piece out and you unscrew it take the other piece out it's important that when you do it you loosen it first because once you cut the bottom off of the oil pan it's not rigid anymore the only reason the oil pans are rigid is because you got this top wall holding the sides where they belong so as soon as you cut it it's floppy so you're going to loosen it enough with your tools so that it spins then cut it in half you don't want it loose enough where you can't cut it where it starts to move when you're trying to cut it but cut that sucker in half at an angle take your pieces out then you can get this remote oil filter kit right here at summit racing for like 119 bucks it's a piece of cake um it screws right in there it's kind of a little bit of a booger bear getting getting those brass fittings in once you get it in but um i don't know i think i worked on it for about two hours or something like that and you know and then by the time i'm done putting you know routing your routing your uh, hoses through and bringing them on and getting them all tied in i don't know why the kit doesn't come with with uh uh hose clamps but i wanted hose clamps obviously you got to use your um your uh teflon tape when you screw these guys in and uh just reposition it here now this is what i decided to do i welded me a little piece i hope the camera's not too close here but i welded me a little standoff piece here so I welded nuts onto the standoff piece so it can go up a little bit higher and catch this thing I think you could probably see. Let's see maybe. Yeah, that's about the best I can do for you. I just welded it onto the frame. You probably could have just drilled some holes and mounted this on the frame, you know, but I wanted something a little more secure. Um, and I wanted to also bring it up so that way it's up high enough that you can't, it's above the frame. So you can't see it but this was my solution now changing the oil filter is going to be a piece of cake uh from now on instead of a seven hour job so uh you can see the engine oil on this this beast is really really black you know due to it just it, they couldn't do the oil filter so obviously they're just not going to do it you know they change the oil and leave the filter the filter that was on there was all it, the paint was all coming off it was rusted through or it was all rusted looking everything had obviously been in there for a long time time so easy modification um i know we're near seven hours into it and all i gotta do is put my uh baffle on which i didn't even need to take off i was doing that because i wanted to inspect the inside of this engine um and all that kind of stuff it's pretty neat it's got a uh, aftermarket pistons and all that kind of stuff in there but at any rate uh you don't even need to take the baffle off uh, in order to do the procedure um and the oil pan gasket is reusable so you don't even need to replace the 200 hundred dollar gasket uh you might put a little rtv on it and uh, let it set up for a few minutes like the instructions say and then install it and uh shoot i'll probably be done with this whole procedure um and probably altogether about five hours work so i'll save myself two hours and then this car has got a major upgrade on it um, just make sure that you start the thing and run it for three minutes and cut it off and inspect it real good and then after a half hour run time stop it and inspect everything real good make sure you don't have anything uh anything uh dripping you gotta be real careful that you're not 
going on anything sharp. I rounded out those corners where it's touching right there with a sander and all that kind of stuff, a grinder. I got in there, made them a little smooth, put a little tape on there just to make sure. Um, but uh, and secure it real good. It doesn't cut if it's secured. It's only when it's wibbling around, you know, and it's wobbling around, it'll cut. Like the way they had it back here. All right, it cut through there because it was just, it was wobbling there. You need to get everything secure. I ain't addressed this one yet. But as long as it's secure and not wobbling around like this, it won't cut through your mess. So, daggone cowboys, look at this. Uh, cut themselves anyway. Never mind. So that's that's the procedure here. Piece of cake, and um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do.